Hello and welcome to PCI Tech TV. Geomatica 2013 improves the way you work with large projects and achieves high quality results for your image processing projects in record time. Today we're going to be taking a look at atmospheric correction, which is a key development area for Geomatica 2013. So I want to give you an idea of the result of our demo once we're done. And uh, so what I've got loaded here is uh, basically a Landsat image with some uh, clouds and some haze. Uh, this is without any correction applied. This is downloaded from the internet. And I'm just going to switch on the end result once we're done this demo. This is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to teach you how to do this. Just uh, follow along. For this demo, I'm going to use a freely available Landsat image over Columbia. As you can see, obtaining cloud-free imagery of this location can be challenging. What I'll do is I'll download one of the images and see if I can improve the quality using PCI's atmospheric correction technology. Okay, so we've downloaded our Landsat image over Columbia from the Glavis website. So once we've downloaded the, uh, the file and extracted the contents to our local folder here, the next step would be to assemble this into a single PIX file and ingest it into uh, PCI's uh, Geomatica software. So the way we're going to do that is uh, open the algorithm librarian. We're going to match, look for Landsat. So we find our algorithm, which is Landsat 7 ingest. We're going to specify a location where we want to save this file locally. So I'm going to save this file in the output folder and give it a logical name. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is specify the input parameters. So I'm going to browse to TIFF and go back to my input folder for my imagery that I downloaded. Now I can point to any one of these images. I'll point to the first band. And uh, that's going to recognize all the bands. Now the, thing, the next thing we want to do is specify the bands that we want to ingest. So we probably want to skip band number six, which is a thermal band. So we'll specify one, two, three, four, five, and seven. And we're going to go ahead and check to make sure that that's okay, so everything is recognized, and we're going to run that. Now the imagery loads uh, with the default channels uh, that aren't mapped properly, so if I want to create a natural color composite, I'll just right-click and remap uh, channel 3 into the red gun, and uh, channel 1 into the blue gun, and then I'll need to re-enhance that to get my uh, natural color composite. Now you can see that this imagery is, is suffering from some cloud, and also some haze um, all over, the, all over the, uh, the various parts of the imagery. So let's see how we can improve that using the uh, atmospheric correction uh, capability. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the uh, atmospheric correction capability. So if I go under Analysis, Atmospheric Correction, and if I click on At Core Ground Reflectance, I'm presented with a new GUI. So this is a new uh, capability that's been added to Geomatica 2013. Everything is wizard-based, and all of these different uh, algorithms are independent, so you don't need to run them all uh, in a series in order to generate a results. What we're going to focus on is the at-core ground reflectance um, part of the uh, atmospheric correction capability. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Sensor and Image Settings, and I'm going to browse to the file which uh, we'll be using to, uh, to do the atmospheric correction. So I'm pointing to my image of Columbia. And uh, you can see that automatically all of these different parameters have been calculated using the atmospheric correction, atmospheric correction module. So it's detected that we're dealing with the Landsat sensor, it knows the acquisition date, the solar zenith, and the solar azimuth. Now these are all parameters that would uh, normally need to be calculated manually and entered. Quite a painstaking, uh, long process. Now the other thing you'll note is that the band setup is also automatically detected. Um, now this is quite important and a key feature in Geomatica 2013 and uh, the way that this has uh, basically been done is just by improving the uh, way in which the metadata is read in when the data is imported. So when we ran that uh, ingest for Landsat 7, uh, basically what it's done is it's detected the wavelength for all of the different uh, channels that we imported. It also calculated the offsets and the gains. Now those are going to be important when we're calculating the um, at sensor ground reflectance values uh, if we're doing any kind of uh, calibrated uh, type work, maybe where we're doing image classification 
or uh, if we're doing uh, uh, measurements from, from the imagery. So I'm also going to go ahead and specify where I want this file to be uh, outputted. Um, so I can uh, browse to my location, go under my uh, demo folder here, and click the output folder. And I'll go on to the next step. So the next step is uh, haze and cloud masking. Now these values that you're seeing in here are actually automatically calculated. So uh, PCI has basically um, done a lot of research to uh, set these values to defaults that make sense for the different uh, sensors. So in this case, we're dealing with Landsat, and uh, these, uh, these default values here are, are going to work. Uh, they're a good starting point anyway, and they're going to work well with uh, this type of data. Um, now, some of these other values here are also calculated uh, automatically. And if I go down to uh, haze removal, um, these values are also automatically calculated based on uh, the fact that we're dealing with uh, Landsat uh, imagery. The next uh, uh, setting is uh, basically the illumination conditions. Now, the uh, uh, average elevation value has actually been automatically extracted based on the uh, four corners of this image and a, uh, a elevation model of the world. So uh, this, this is useful for um, basically if there's any kind of steep terrain or uh, any kind of uh, uh, shadows cast from, uh, from various uh, mountainous features and so on, this is going to help uh, calculate some of the illumination conditions and help out with the atmospheric correction. So a more detailed uh, DEM can be loaded. Um, if, uh, if, that, if it's required in uh, cases where we have extreme elevation. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use the constant height that's uh, been automatically calculated. So if I go, if I go to the next panel, uh, visibility and ground reflectance, basically uh, this setting here has to be uh, uh, automatically, uh, or sorry, it has to be manually entered. Now we've got a couple of different options. So if we look at, our, if we look at the uh, terrain that we're dealing with here, um, we can see that this uh, qualifies well as rural, so we'll, we'll leave it as rural. Um, the, the condition is actually uh, automatically calculated based on the fact that we know the time of year and uh, the latitude. So uh, that's been automatically calculated and I can leave that, uh, leave that the way it is. And um, the uh, sensor tilt angle is also uh, automatically calculated and with Landsat basically we're looking straight down at nadir, so we're not off nadir in this case. Um, and the uh, visibility map is, is automatically calculated as well. And uh, from here, basically, I can just go ahead and click Run, and it's going to generate a result for me that I can look uh, in, in focus. Well, there you have it. We have a result. It only took a few, uh, about a minute and a half or so to run for this complete uh, Landsat image. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look, uh, closer look at some of the re uh, processing results. So the automatic... Uh, haze and uh, cloud detection has uh, generated a really impressive result here. We've got a couple of different layers loaded in uh, as a result of the atmospheric correction uh, workflow. Uh, the first one here is uh, basically the uh, haze mask. So all of this green that you're seeing here are areas where uh, the algorithm has detected the presence of haze and uh, essentially uh, has attempted to uh, do something about reducing the effect of the haze. Now this red area is uh, the cloud mask. Now these are areas where uh, the clouds can't, uh, can't be removed, but uh, knowing where they're located is certainly helpful for uh, performing tasks such as mosaicing, where you might be using uh, images from different satellites or images from different dates uh, to compose your mosaic. And so masking out uh, clouds on a certain date and uh, using those as cut lines uh, would certainly be a very valid approach. So if I look at a few areas in this image, you can see that the uh, uncorrected image here has uh, quite a bit of haze um, and, and also some clouds. So if I turn on the atmospheric correction version, uh, you can virtually see that the haze has been pretty much completely removed, which is great uh, for, you know, for if you're performing any kind of uh, visual analysis on, on these areas. So I'll just zoom down to, uh, to another area here just a bit further south. And uh, you'll see here we have a lot of haze as well, which is uh, hindering our ability to, uh, to do any analysis on what's underneath. And if I turn on the haze corrected uh, version, you can see that that's uh, virtually gone. Well, thanks for watching this uh, quick demonstration on the atmospheric correction capability that's found within Geomatica 2013. Stay tuned for more demos on the exciting new capability that's going to help streamline your workflow like never before.